What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I'm your host Jonathan Parkinson and this is going to be for you Windows users. Now if you are not a Windows user but you maybe know somebody that is a Windows user, this is going to be a good little situation where you can maybe get them to switch over to Linux because we all know if we've been using Linux that it's free, open sourced. And the community is so much better than any other operating system, whether you want to admit it or not. Uh, it is a little confusing at first, I will admit that, if you are somebody that's you know used to working with some commands. But once you get the basic commands, it's just like any language in the world, I guess. And that means language, which I'm talking about, such as like English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, you know, Arabic, whatever you're talking about. Uh, as soon as you get the kind of basic fundamentals about it, it makes it really easy for you to kind of go about your business. Now, that's not saying you're going to be a whiz at it, but at least you can get the, you know, the basics. So the, what Live or Linux Live USB Creator will do, uh, here's some of the, you know, kind of features that it's going to let you to work with. Uh, you're going to see that the biggest one is no reboot is needed. So that's kind of the first step that I kind of recommend for people that are switching over to Linux is a dual booting method. Uh, I know a lot of people that have jumped on the Chromebooks and they first start off with Chrome OS and Crouton. But eventually if they become more of a Linux person later on, such as for gaming on Steam or uh, you just want to be have a more of a you know a full desktop environment that eventually they come to me and they ask me how can I completely remove Chrome OS and just completely install Linux because that's all I want to use from there on out. So with that being said, this is a good way of doing that because from here, if, as long as they have a live USB and the size is really going to be you know depending on what distro you're using, but the bare minimum in my opinion. And for one I've last checked, is going to be a four gigabyte. Uh, the bigger the USB, the better off you're going to be. That way you can store files on that USB and you don't have to worry about running out of space. So, you know, invest that extra $10, $15 to jump that up, double up your space on a USB drive. And so what it is, it's like, as it says, it's free, completely open sourced. Uh, you are going to need to download a distro as well. Uh, but at least with this program, as long as you are on... Uh, Windows, you will be able to use this, then what happens is you'll plug in your USB, you'll open up this program, and this program will then install your live USB, or sorry, your Linux distro onto that USB, creating a live USB, which means that when you plug it into your computer, uh, the way this works is uh, you don't have to do that, so it's going to create like a virtualization, so you'll have like a window in a window where you'll be able to work in that Linux distro and you can kind of mess around and play around with it. Because people that are coming from other operating systems and they're coming from like, let's say, OS X or they're coming from Windows, jumping over to Linux can be kind of uh, tedious at first just because you, you know, you're, you're learning something completely new and that's the way life works. And when we get a little bit older in life, we tend to get stuck in our ways and trying to teach some, an old dog new trick, as they like to say. Uh, you, you know how it is. But as soon as people grasp onto it and they realize that you can do pretty much anything on Linux, the community is a little more broader, uh, people are willing to help. As long as you're not asking too much of a basic question that's been asked a million times, you know, Google search your question first. And then, of course, if you can't find your answer, then go ahead and answer it. Uh, answer it. But the reason I'm kind of saying this is because uh, I've made quite a few videos on various channels on YouTube. And I will say that out of every video I've made, no matter what operating system I'm talking about, whether that's Windows, Linux, OS X, Android, iOS, just anything in general, the Linux videos by far get the most views. And that's starting to tell me that there's more and more people starting to switch over to that. And even the younger generations are really jumping into this. So if you're an older uh, individual and have children and you want to kind of get them you know, involved in the computer world, this might be a great way for you to teach them uh, the backside and insides of a computer because when you're working within Linux it kind of forces you to learn stuff about the computer. It's not just a given where you take a file, download it, install it, and it works. Uh, yeah, that's easy way of doing it, but not necessarily the easy way of doing things is the best way of doing things. Uh, the reason being is you want to know what you're doing. Uh, as our world gets more advanced and technology becomes just kind of the uh, thing that we do on a daily basis, we want to make sure that everybody is kind of keeping up to date with how things work. That way there's not going to be these kind of, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, conspiracy theories that are going around. Um, 
even though I don't really like to say that because that just means to conspire to do something and that, that's pretty much a broad term but you know what I mean the tinfoil hat people is what I'm talking about more or less uh, just because the people that are working on the Linux side seem to have a better understanding of these uh, NSA type in, like situations where you know people are worried about the NSA watching them but if, I've always found out that the people working on Linux have a better understanding of what's really going on in the real world. And so the people that are using operating systems on Windows and OS X, for example, I'm not saying they don't know, uh, but I'm just talking like the general spectrum of people. You know, that your grandma or, you know, your parents that are older that are not really too much into that stuff. Maybe they're from a generation prior to the computer you know, technological boom that we had in the 90s and that we're, you know, continually booming into. So it's just good. You know, if you got a younger individual or you yourself are trying to learn something new or you just want to go ahead and take a Windows device that you have or um, and go ahead and then start it with this, this is the way of doing it. Now, this isn't going to help you if you are running OS X, but there is other options and I will create a video for you OS X people so that way you can jump in on this as well. Uh, this has just been built by a Windows developer, I'm guessing. Oh, not a Windows developer, but somebody that has a Windows PC that wants to have Linux running inside of it as a dual boot. Uh, just because uh, it's a little easier for those two to match up in the long run. The, the reason that is, is because Windows has been around for so long in the sense that uh, it's been more popular. Uh, Apple, you know, it, it's very popular. It's, you know, the, they by far have the best hardware, so don't, you know, quote me wrong on there. But... You know, uh, Apple's kind of disappeared for a little bit in the 90s, went bankrupt for a split second, and then Steve Jobs popped it back up. But Windows was continually thriving through the 90s, and that's when Linux was also, you know, building its foundation. Thus, we are where we are today with it. Uh, Linux, for a lot of people, uh, don't really... Uh, Linux, for the most people that don't understand Linux, don't get the process of it because they're afraid of what we call the terminal or the command line uh, that's not so much the case anymore there is a software center so you can download applications pretty simple uh, pretty easy to do these days uh, well for most of the uh, applications as long as you're sticking with the hardcore uh, ubuntu's which is or sorry the uh, linux distributions which is going to be this ubuntu so anything that is ubuntu based so ubuntu will work uh, also linux mint will work just to name two of the more popular uh, distro options out there. So even though Ubuntu is kind of the foundation, there's other distros out there that do take advantage of the software and the applications that are available on Ubuntu. They've just kind of reskinned it and changed a few things on the forefront or the UI, we call it, uh, the user interface. But the backside of it all is all based on what we call .deb files, and that is Ubuntu. Now that's me kind of getting off topic a little bit, but what I'm doing is just kind of explaining to why I think uh, individuals should go ahead and use this Linux Live USB creator to go ahead and test it out because I just don't want people to be afraid of, you know, trying new things. Uh, this is extremely easy to do. Um, it's so easy to do that at one time when I originally used this a few years back, you know, it just made me completely commit myself to Linux. Uh, it wasn't this exact version, but it was something similar to it. And thus, I don't have any Windows or OS X uh, operating systems anymore. I purely run Linux. Uh, every once in a while, I will back uh, backtrack to Chrome OS just to kind of see what's going on. But I always end up coming back to Linux. Why? Because I am a uber geek, I guess, if you want to call me that. <laughs> no, no skin off my back. Uh, but anyways, go ahead and try this out. I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, share it maybe uh, for Christmas or a birthday present for somebody if you want to get somebody on your side of the world. Um, go ahead and, uh, you know, buy them a live or a USB stick, create a nice little distro for them, give it to them, let them boot on their Windows device and, you know, show them how to install maybe Steam or something else like that. Uh, you can check it out in the videos on the channel. You find out how to do that, uh, install Skype, all that type of stuff. And then you'll be able to, you know, meet up with each other and, you know, play along with each other on a free and open sourced platform where you don't have to worry about paying for these license fees uh, or you don't have to worry about paying for just these monthly, just there's dues that are due on certain operating systems, whereas Linux is always going to be free. It's easy to update. Um, just make sure, as always, that you back up your information as you should be doing on anything and you can back it up to the cloud like anything else. Uh, so if you do have any questions about it, remember this is kind of a bit of a long uh, 
uh, rant about other stuff besides this Linux Live USB creator. But go ahead and try it out if you are on a Windows or you do have a side Windows. Uh, if you do have an older Windows device, this can revive it. So there's you know plenty of old devices that I'll go pick up for like twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and I'll turn them into a like a little server for me, and I'll use that with Linux. Thus I'll put my media on it, and then I'll hook that up to my TVs, for example, and then I have a media server right there. You can do that with Pi devices as well, uh, but you know if you have an old computer just sitting around that's just gaining dust, and the reason you don't have anything else is because you can't you know run any programs on it, go ahead and try uh, Linux on there. It's a great way of you know testing stuff out, and you'll be surprised at how much smoother that device will probably be running due to Linux because it doesn't take so much of your CPU and it's not that intensive on your uh, computer. Uh, again, if you do have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.